The great thing about humanity is its diversity. We're all different, and because we're all different, we all do different things. Some of us play basketball, some of us cook, some of us write children's science fiction. Ta -da! Some of us take the time and effort it takes to acquire a skill. We go through that learning process of finding out how to become better at something. The point is that this is what enables specialization. It's because a cobbler concentrates on making shoes and a baker on making bread that they become better at it, certainly better than we could. If you had to make all your own shoes, how many do you think you could make? The answer is not as many as a cobbler can make. <laughs> the point is, by using specialization, all of us can draw on the work of experts. Experts who can produce far better and far cheaper than we could do ourselves. It makes us richer. I pay the cobbler and he produces shoes cheaply and that gives me money left over. I am richer, he's richer. The great father of modern economics, Adam Smith, pointed to a pin factory. Now, he said there are 18 different operations to make one pin. How many do you suppose, he asked, could a single person make in a day? Perhaps 10? Well, in Smith's factory, there were 10 people employed, each of them doing two or three things, and between them they could make 48,000 pins in a day. That's 4,800 pins per person, and they would sell a lot more cheaply than any 10 pins produced by a full day's labor. So specialization enables efficiency, and it enables things to be produced more cheaply. We all play that game where we get to be somebody famous from history. I'd like to have been Julius Caesar, apart from the Ides of March stuff. But the one I really want to have been is Eli Whitney, because Eli Whitney did two very important things. One, he's the inventor of the cotton gin. Thank you, one for Eli Whitney, but he did something more important. He bid for a contract for the US Army, the newly formed US Army in the late 1700s, to supply muskets. Now, he'd worked out another angle to specialization, interchangeable parts, and the age of mass production was born. Any stock would fit, any barrel would fit, any trigger. So people were able to mass produce the one item, and then you'd pick one from each box, click, 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 and there's your musket. He won the contract. So the age of mass production was born, and it was Eli Whitney what done it. Many people think it was Henry Ford who invented mass production with his Model T Ford. No, he invented the moving production line. The age of mass production predated him by a century. And once you're mass producing single items, guess what it makes possible? Yes, mechanization. And first of all, with water mills, and then steam mills, and then electricity, we found out how to apply external power to lend strength and speed to the human elbow. And it made us able to produce a lot more goods, a lot more quickly, and a lot more cheaply. And that led us to create a lot more wealth. Madsen Perry attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.